Good morning students. Let us begin the next chapter now. Static electricity. Now static means at rest and electricity all of you know. So now this chapter we learn about the electricity at rest. Now let us consider some of the instances in our daily life. Now what is the cause of these instances or the effects that let us see now. All of you must have seen that the plastic comb or a ruler when it is rubbed on a dry hair attracts pieces of paper. If we pass near a polyester curtain again and again it gets attracted towards us. If we rub a blanket with our hands and take it near a metal object a spark is seen in the dark. Now besides that, the other instances also you must have seen that if you wear a sweater, woolen sweater, then while wearing the woolen sweater or a shirt, polyester shirt, you can see that your hair on your hands, they raise. So, what do we learn from these instances? Why does this happen? Now, all these instances happen because of the static electricity. So, whenever a plastic comb or a ruler is rubbed on a dry hair, the plastic comb becomes electrically charged or the scale becomes electrically charged and it attracts the pieces of paper. Now, when we pass near a polyester curtain, that polyester curtain is charged and so it gets attracted towards us. Now, if we rub a blanket with our hands and when we take it near a metal object, as the blanket is charged due to rubbing with the hands, it gets charged and it attracts the metal object and so a spark is seen in the dark. So now next question is what do you mean by the electric charge? Now from the above examples gives us the glimpse of the electric charge and that all the objects in our surrounding hold in abundance this electric charge. So this electric charge is stored even in our bodies. All substances are made of very fine tiny particles. Now this is the intrinsic electric charge is an intrinsic property of these particles. Means the particles of which the object is made has got electric charge. Though in this way the electric charge is abundantly present, it is always in a hidden state. This is because two opposite charges, positive and the negative, they are present in equal numbers in all the substances around us. So, when a positive and a negative charge on an object are balanced, the object is neutral. There is no net charge on the object. So, if these charges are not balanced, then we say that the object is charged. Now, the next question is, how would Two charge objects interact with each other. Now, two charge objects they interact with each other, either they would attract or they would repel each other. Now, this we can see with the help of this experiment which is given below. Now, rub one end of a glass rod against a silk cloth. Due to rubbing, a small charge gets transferred from glass rod to the silk cloth. So, 
the glass rod becomes positively charged and the silk cloth becomes negatively charged now suspend this glass rod freely in the air with the help of thread now charge another glass rod in the same manner and bring it near the suspended rod now the glass rod is positively charged and are both the glass rods they are positively charged so when they are brought near each other they push away each other means they repel each other this means that the like charges repel each other so instead of positive glass rods if you take another objects which are negatively charged we observe that they too will repel each other now again hold the glass positively charged glass rod with the help of thread and now you take take a plastic rod rub that plastic rod on a woolen cloth the plastic rod becomes negatively charged now this plus negatively charged plastic rod you take it near the glass rod we see that there is a attraction now in the figure you can see glass rod is positive charges are shown on the glass rod and the negative on the plastic rod this means glass rod is positively charged and the plastic rod is negatively charged so we see that these two rods they come near each other or they attract e each other so thus we see that the rods carrying opposite charges get pulled towards each other or there is a attraction so what do we infer from these two experiments here we see that the like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other now next let us see how this what is the origin of the electric charge now all the substances we know they are made up of particles and these particles are ultimately made up of small tiny atoms now when we look at the details of the atomic structure of an uh, atom we know that each atom contains a stationary positive charge and the moving negative charges now these two charges being perfectly balanced an atom is electrically neutral now all objects we know they are made up of atoms which means that they are electrically neutral now the question arises here how do these arises how do these objects gets become electrically charged now here in the figure you can see these two objects here they are rubbed against each other now you count the charges on both of them now initially you can see in this red object three positive charges and three negative charges are there means these positive and the negative charges they neutralize each other and there is no net charge on this red color object similarly on this gray object you can see the three positive charges are there and the negative charges here only one is there and with the arrow here you can see that when the friction is there between the two charges two objects then two negative charges are seen to be shifting to the red object this means that now here if you count the number of negative charges on red object is 5 and on and the positive charges is 3 whereas on this gray object 
only three positive charges are there and one negative charge. So after friction, we see this is the condition position of the charges of on these objects. So on red color object, we see there are more of negative charges. So it is negatively charged. And in this gray object, we see the number of positive charges is more and so it is positively charged. So now you must have understood the difference between the negatively charged object and the positively charged object. So whenever there is a friction between the two objects, the electrons transfer from one object to another. So the object which gains electrons becomes negatively charged and the object which loses electron becomes positively charged. So this means that so here now you understood how the charges are developed on an object. Now here one example activity you have to perform take a paper polythene, nylon cloth, cotton cloth, silk cloth and then here take first take the objects mentioned in the charge near some small pieces of paper and see observe what happens and then rub each of these objects in turn against one of the materials given and take it near the pieces of paper. So now you see the materials so here you can see in the table here these are the objects this you have to take it six objects you have to take balloon ball pen refill eraser wooden ruler steel spoon and the copper strip now these all these objects they are available at home got it now first what you do here these objects here and here the materials are given paper, polythene, nylon cloth, cotton cloth and silk cloth. Now these materials are also available at home. Now out of these materials just take the two ones. Polythene you take, three materials you take, paper, polythene and cotton cloth. Now what you do here, this, as it is given in the table, you try. First we will take the material used for rubbing, we will take the paper. Then rub that paper with the balloon. And you see and small pieces of paper you keep on aside and see if this balloon is attracted by the pieces of paper or not. This activity all of you have to perform at home and then you will complete this table. So this balloon whether it attracts the pieces of paper after rubbing with the paper that you have to write down yes or no. And then in the next column you have to write down does the object gets charged by rubbing. Then second one, take a ball pen refill, again rub it with the paper and then you hold it near the pieces of paper. If they are attracted, it, if it attracts the paper, then you have to write down that the object that the ball pen refill is charged. So in the third column, you will write down yes. Now take a eraser, rub it with again with the paper. Again, take take it near the small pieces of paper. See whether it is attracted or not. Then, if it is attracts the pieces of paper, then you have to write down that the object is charged. Then, take a wooden ruler. Again, hold that wooden ruler. Uh, rub it with the paper. So, this way here, this experiment, you will perform with all the six objects which are given in the first column and write down your observation in the second and the third column. Now repeat this activity with the polythene and, and nylon cloth also. Clear? Now next is here, see this. About 2500 years ago, a Greek scientist named Thales found that the feathers are attracted towards the rot of yellow colored amber which had been rubbed against a woolen cloth. Now amber is called as the electron in the Greek language. Therefore, 
This property of amber to attract things was named electricity by Thomas Brown. Now we have to see what do you mean by the frictional electricity. The electric charge generated by friction is called as the frictional electricity. Now this charge is produced only at the place of friction. Hence, this is called as the static electricity. Now it remains on an object for a short duration. The charges of static electricity are absorbed in moist air. That is why this experiment should be performed in dry weather, particularly in winter. Now this experiment is there that apparatus take a few straw, wooden cloth that is the socks or the gloves and a glass bottle. Now place a straw on the bottle as shown in the figure. Now take another straw near it and observe what happens. Now the straw on the bottle and another straw both are not charged. So we will see that nothing happens. Okay, now take rub the other charge against a woolen cloth. So, the, the straw it is made up of plastic. So, when it is rubbed on a wooden cloth, it becomes negatively charged. Now, that negatively charged straw, you take it again near the straw on the bottle. And we see that there is a attraction. Now, take two straws, rub them again on a woolen cloth. Now, both the straws will be negatively charged. And we know the negatively like charges repel each other. Take the negatively charged straw near the another negatively charged straw. We will see that there is a repulsion. Now, after this here, what you do? Take a take a woolen cloth near the straw on the bottle. Now woolen cloth it is positively charged and the straw is negatively charged. So we see that there is a attraction. So these observations when we are what we have done in here it should be written down in this chart. So when a charged straw is taken near the uncharged one there is a repulsion. And then what is the inference we draw that inference here C given at the bottom. This I have written down marked uh, underlined it with the red line that the electrically charged objects attract uncharged objects. Now the second thing was when two straws carrying similar charges are brought near each other. Both the straws are negatively charged. So what we observed there was a repulsion. So, what is the inference we can write down here see in yellow color I have marked it there is a repulsion between like charges and then third one the charged straw and the oppositely charged cloth which are used for rubbing are brought near each other there is a attraction and there is attraction between the unlike electric charges hence we can see from these three instances that there is a attraction when attraction between the charge and the uncharged object there can be attraction when two oppositely charged objects are brought together. So from this experiment we infer that Repulsion is used as the test for identifying an electrically charged object. If there is a repulsion between the two objects, then only we can see, say that both the objects are charged. If attraction is there, then there are two inferences. Either two inferences are first one, both the objects are oppositely charged. And the second one is that the charge, one of the object is charged and another one is uncharged. 
So I hope it's clear to everyone now.